Player welfare is and always has been rugby's number one priority and head injury prevention is at the top of that list. We're taking this seriously and I don't just mean referees, I mean players, coaches and medics all across the world. And to encourage a change in player behaviour, a new head contact process has been developed and it's no longer just about high tackles, it's about all head contacts. Shoulder charges, head-on-head -head collisions, dangerous clearouts, and players leading into the contact with their forearms. If you don't think this affects you, think again. It's as relevant to the international game as it is to kids playing in the park. So it's time that you take it seriously too. Here's how it works and some of the things that you'll hear refs say. The first question is simple. Has there been contact to the head or not? If the answer is no, of course we play on. If the answer is yes and there has been, then the referee will decide if there's foul play or not. How do we do that? Well, we ask if the head contact was avoidable or not. If it was avoidable, or it was deliberate or reckless, then we're dealing with foul play. Here, the tackler could have lowered their height and prevented the head-on-head -head collision. And here, the player could have avoided the opponent's head in the clear-out. Both were avoidable, both were foul play. Of course, some things are unavoidable, like this example, where the player drops suddenly and significantly into the tackle. Or here, where the ball carrier is tackled into the defender. No one at fault, no foul play. If it is foul play, then there's a sanction. And which sanction depends upon the degree of danger. Was it forceful? Was it at high speed? Was it direct to the head? Tick all of those boxes and you're starting at a red card. A low degree of danger means a penalty kick only. Somewhere in the middle will sit at a yellow card. We have to understand that rugby is a dynamic game played by dynamic players. And so sometimes a referee will have to lower that sanction because of those moving parts. So you might hear referees refer to mitigation or mitigating circumstances. However, a referee won't even consider lowering it if a player's actions are illegal throughout or they're clearly deliberate or highly reckless, like these two here. But if there is a significant drop in height or a last minute change in direction, this could reduce it down from a red to a yellow or perhaps a yellow card to a penalty. But it's a maximum of one step down from where it started. Here's one more reminder of the head contact process. Remember, this is being implemented to protect players. It's up to us all to play our part in making our game safer and help reduce the risk of head injuries. That's why rugby is taking this seriously. And please, you must too.